coming up on DITV, we update you on the official cause of the death of the Southwest Airlines victim. And later, we give you a taste of Iowa City's newest restaurant. Our very own Bo Bowman sits down with former Iowa fullback Drake Kulik, and we have updates from the women's golf team. Finally, some good news and weather. Stick around to find out more. All that and more coming up on this Thursday morning edition of DITV. Don't go anywhere. DITV starts right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. I'm Kaylin Cluck. And I'm Ethan Gutstein. The official cause of death of the Southwest Airlines passenger who died Tuesday has been released. According to the Philadelphia Department of Public Health, Jennifer Reardon suffered from blunt impact trauma to, to her head, neck and torso. These injuries occurred after an airplane's engine broke off the left wing, shattering a window and sucking Reardon up into the hole. Reardon died later in a hospital due to the injuries. Her death was classified as an accident. Seven others on the flight were also injured. Iowa City first responders held an event to help children with autism learn to approach officers in an emergency situation. Community Autism Day was held at Terry Trueblood Recreation Area in Iowa City. The idea behind the event was to have officers meet with children in autism, with autism and their families in a friendly, non-emergency situation. Founders of the event say it is especially important in light of Jake Wilson, the autistic teen in LaPorte City who went missing last week. One Iowa City bridge is set to temporarily close later this spring. Park Road Bridge, which is located next to Lower City Park, will be closed for about two months. The purpose for the closure is to allow workers to complete the construction on Dubuque Street and to connect both side roads with the new bridge. There will be a temporary road for people to access Lower City Park during the closure. Officials are still unsure of, of an exact date the bridge will close, but they said it will be after Memorial Day, which is May 28th. A nonprofit organization in Iowa City is raising funds to help students see the world differently. Fast Track takes a holistic approach to helping Iowa City high schoolers who are having trouble in school. Every year, Fast Track takes a tour of historically black colleges and universities to help students see there are people in college who are a lot like them. The organization is holding a banquet tonight at 6 p.m. to raise funds for this tour. The event will be held at Old Brick Church. The suggested minimum donation to get into the event is $25. Every spring here at the UI, art majors put on a showcase to show off all the hard work they've been putting in. DITV News reporter Darlia Adams attended one of these showcases about black culture. To many, family is important, and the value of culture is one that is unique to every individual. The event for the culture explores one young woman's experience with black culture. So basically, I love everything like about my culture, black culture, everything. Um, and it's kind of like the central idea for all of my works. I had a few people drop tears coming to the show, which made me so happy despite their tears. But I just really want to evoke emotion in the show. I want people to feel what I'm feeling. Each piece had a different meaning that touched the hearts of many. I'm overwhelmed by what I started to see on the wall and what it represents and all the unhidden feelings and emotions behind it speaks volumes. Not only was this event a showcase of culture, but a learning experience as well. I'm trying to show like, I don't know how to play spades, but teach me and then like, how about I teach you some games that I that I like and that I know, like Phase 10 and Uno. From church bands to family reunion t-shirts and words and art that Raven Ross feels embodies her cultural experience, this art exhibit is one to remember. I'm here at the Visual Arts Building at the University of Iowa campus. This is Darlia Adams, DIT. And you know, Ethan, after that brutal rain-snow combination yesterday, I was so relieved to step outside and see sun today. Exactly, exactly, Kaylin. I really thought Mother Nature forgot about spring. But let's toss it over to Gus in the weather studio with this week's weather. Gus? 
Thanks guys, it may not always be sunny in Iowa City, but at least it's finally warming up and the snow is melting. Today we begin with partly cloudy skies. Temperatures will reach a high of 52 degrees and lower to a chilly 24 degrees later in the evening. Now let's take a look at our extended forecast. Friday will be mostly sunny with temperatures ranging from the warm upper 50s to the upper 30s of the evening. Saturday may give us cloudy skies, but temperatures will remain the same. We will experience warmer temperatures Sunday, ranging from the low 60s in the afternoon to the upper 30s later that evening. While we may not be used to it, Monday will be our favorite day for the rest of the month as we will see sunny skies. Temperatures will range from the low 60s and decrease to the low 40s. Finally, Tuesday will be cloudy with similar temperatures ranging from the mid 60s to the lower 40s later in the day. Now, we'll be more, uh, next week will be more uh, gloomy, but sunny, uh, sunny skies just got a week closer. So that's your weather for the week. Ethan, Kaylin, back to you guys at the desk. <clears throat> Pizza lovers in Iowa City will be happy to hear that one Iowa City favorite is set to reopen today. Falvo Brothers closed in Iowa City and Coralville locations on March 30th for employee training, but they have not reopened since. The business will reopen later this afternoon, but under new ownership. Andrew Aarons and Adam Brantman are making some changes to the restaurant, but they do not want to lose Falvo's identity. Falvo's will be operating full service all weekend. Downtown Iowa City welcomes a new restaurant and lounge to replace long-standing favorite Atlas. St. Birch Tavern offers an oyster bar, a full bar and lounge, and fine dining. The restaurant is now open to the public. DITV's Kennedy Cook went to check it out. Many Iowa City community members are familiar with the infamous Iowa Avenue that is filled with various bookstores, lounges, and savory restaurants. However, as one approaches the corner of Iowa and North Dubuque Street, where the long-standing Atlas restaurant and bar once existed, it may come to a surprise that a new restaurant has taken over. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you the St. Burke Tavern. The restaurant and lounge that replaced the 18-year long-standing Atlas opened to the public two weeks ago. St. Burke's contemporary design distinguishes it from the previous restaurant. I had the chance to sit down with owner Corey Kent, who informed me of some of the changes and the reasonings behind them. Well, when we took this over, we didn't know exactly what we were going to do with the building or the space. We wanted to see um, what it was like to run it as Atlas. Uh, we always had this project of oysters and kind of this throwback to a supper club uh, style restaurant in our, in our heads for a while. We've kind of had this concept. And we weren't sure where exactly it would fit or um, if it would fit this space or not. And after uh, just kind of talking about it, we were pretty passionate about doing that concept. And we did come to the conclusion that this space where Alice was uh, formerly located would be a great spot for it. St. Burke caters to all of customers' needs, whether it be a light and fresh feel during lunch or a warm and toasty environment during the night. Be sure to check out the new restaurant and tavern. Until next time, I'm Kennedy Cook, DITV News. And for those of you that were wondering, the St. Birch Tavern got its name from the University of Iowa football team's original mascot, Birch the Bear. And you know, speaking of football, we have the spring game coming up this weekend. And it's also that time of year when NFL prospects prepare for their future. But let's toss it over to Taylor, Taylor Cassian in the sports studio with more. Thanks guys. Yes, that spring game coming up is very exciting, although we do say goodbye to some former Hawkeye athletes who played last year. However, there are a lot of exciting things coming up for them. And this week we premiered our new series, Beyond the Swarm, a series with former Hawkeye football players as they approach the NFL draft. Today, Beyond the Swarm looks at a key piece in the offense whose position doesn't always get the recognition it deserves. Take a look. Hey guys, Bo Bowman here with you from DITV, sitting here with Drake Kulik, fullback, former fullback for the Iowa Hawkeyes, now uh, graduated and looking for, forward to uh, the NFL draft. So, Drake, we're going to just kind of walk through your career so far, or er, here at Iowa, and then we'll talk a little bit about the draft too at the end. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. So, your recruiting process at the beginning, you walked on here at Iowa. What, was, what were some of the uh, factors that, you, that led to that decision? 
Uh, I grew up being a Hawkeye fan, <clears throat> and I was in a fortunate situation uh, with my family was able to support me um, and allow me to uh, make the decision to come here over taking money from other places. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just kind of a thing where I wanted to be part of the Hawkeye family, and I'd always wanted to, uh, you know, swarm out in the black and gold in Kinnick, and, and I was able to, to, uh, to do that. And then 16, you played in all 12 games, but you had that brutal injury on the first play of the game against Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Talk talk me through that play, and then your recovery from. Yeah, I mean it was it was no different than any other play. Um, unfortunately, I just I just had a guy undercut me and fall into my leg and uh, broke it pretty bad. And so yeah, it's just the unfortunate part of football is that you can't control those things. And you know it's it's not really if it's going to happen, it's when. Everybody every player goes through injuries. It's just the nature of the game. And that night was my night. Um, so it was an unfortunate thing to happen. But um, you know the, this training staff the strength conditioning staff the coaching staff they were all really good to me during the recovery they all had my back and they all wanted the best for me um and so everybody helped me through it a lot what was the rehab like it was tough uh mm -hmm. it, it was it was long it was a lot of times it was kind of it felt like i was just running my head into the wall because i didn't feel myself getting any better um but you know russ and the doctors and coach doyle and the rest of the guys they they all were very positive to me and they let you know they just kind of reaffirmed that I would get better and it was going to be a process but you know they had my back and and they just wanted to see me get better and and, and so um, though it was a long personal process it was good and um, it, it gave me a new outlook on football for sure so mm -hmm. um, yeah ev everybody really helped me through it and then you came back your senior season uh, what were some of your favorite moments from your season yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the first game back, coming out in the swarm, feeling those emotions of the, just being very thankful and grateful and happy that I could come back and play football again uh, after the injury. That was one of my favorite moments. Um, you know, all the trophy games, being able to celebrate with the teammates in the locker room, definitely, you know, beating Ohio State the way we did, that was really awesome. And then, obviously, the, the bowl game, being able to go out on a win in the first bowl game that we've won as, as, a, as a unit. So it was, it was special. You can check out the full interview with Bo and Drank on the Daily Iowans YouTube page. The Iowa women's golf team heads to Cincinnati, Ohio this upcoming weekend to conclude their season as they compete in the Big Ten Conference Championship. Let's check in with the team as they take a look back at their season so far and share their goals for the tournament. As a whole, just coming together and believing in each other, um, you know, looking across the room and just knowing that the other person has their back and just being excited for the opportunity and allowing um, good things to happen. And I think they can. I think each one is worked really hard and just trusting their process and have a little faith that something special could happen. I think just to like have fun, there's not really any pressure. I mean, we haven't had the best season, so I think that's almost like an advantage going into Big Tens because there's not any pressure. We can just go out and play the way we know we can play. I know everybody here has an awesome game and we've been working really hard, so if we just play as we know we can, like I know we can compete. So As a team, I think we all just are going to go out there and have fun. Um, I think everyone's worked really hard this season and we're just ready to all play well at the same time. A lot of it is just in individual growth. Um, everyone, I think, uh, has gotten better at something, um, if it's on or off the golf course. and. Within this building, I think there's just been tons of growth, and it's been exciting to see. And a lot of it's been, uh, you can see it on the golf course, and a lot of it you can see in the classroom and just in their daily life. The team looks to bring back both team and individual titles, and senior Jessica Ip looks to close out her season with a Big Ten tournament win. That's all for me in the sports studio, but be sure to tune in tomorrow for a special pregame show with Mary Kate Harrion and Zach Mackey, where they'll break down Iowa's spring game tomorrow night. And that's all we have for you on this Thursday morning edition of DITV News. Be sure to head over to dailyiowan.com for all your latest news between Monday and Friday. And for more Iowa City and campus news, be sure to check out the print edition of the Daily Iowan on Stands Now. For DITV, I'm Ethan Gutstein. And I'm Kaylin Cluck. Until next time, Iowa City.